so after the <laughs> marathon stream, which was an even longer marathon than I thought it was going to be because I apparently forgot to end the stream. I did everything else. I raided somebody. I did all the stuff. I did the hosts. And yeah, then I was notified, you know, you're still live. Like half an hour later, I said, oh, that's not good. So I turned that off. And now I'm turning it back on. <laughs> just because I felt kind of stupid after that. But what we got here is the the giant monstrosity of Doom, otherwise known as the Caracula bust from Blackheart Models. And yes, this is half-life size, and it started out at about 200 pounds. No, it started at 25 pounds, 30 pounds of resin. By the end of the seven hours, we said it was 975 pounds, and that by having to support it with my left arm like this for several hours, my arm had the strength to fire an English longbow. I think it was uh, well over a thousand yards. Accuracy, in doubt. Distance, not in doubt. Oh, you can see, hold this even closer. Now that, see, this paint has had a few hours to, I always just use the word to settle. This was all, I know it looks a little bit glossy with the lights hitting it, but here you can see not super glossy. It's really, and over here where we put some of our fluorescent paint to get those oranges and greens, like those, I, I just describe them as fire opals. Those those sort of gemstone looking, look at, look at the indentations in this paper towel from those spikes on this guy here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna play around with this some more, especially on the other side. Now we have been using our big old crap brushes. We've also been using our makeup sponges and we were painting with the makeup sponges. Yes indeed. But what I want to do now I think is maybe some of the stuff that we did on this. So look at all that. Look at all that in the carapace there. Start to get some. Hey we got beef in the hole. He is first. Welcome in. Yeah that was <laughs> that was, did you notice uh, that I just I guess apparently I got raided. I mean, how's that to not even, like, be sitting there and you get raided? That was really cool. So, <laughs> that was uh, unexpected, to say the least. That was not part of the plan. Now, we got our primary palette, which is in a whole different place. We even got a secondary palette. At one point, we had a third palette here. That was my thumb. So, we went from two brush blending to two sponge blending to three palette blending because just one when one palette's not enough you grab three so i think you can see how we're starting to transfer some of the bright greens over here well let's let's start to do again some of this work here we just call those the the external neck brains because well you know that's a it's a dermatological thing, you know. I mean, it happens. I don't know, especially when you have when you wear your shell outside your head, you get external brains, I guess. We are working with our again our homemade oil paints here, and by that, I mean nifty little colors like oh this ultramarine violet, with our speedball. These two in combination, uh, with a little. Uh, Piece of gym, piece of metal, something like a oh sprue, because we all got metal miniatures sitting around. I mean, we seriously do. You'd use a little bit of that piece of sprue, and uh, guess what? <laughs> you got yourself an agitator. Now, <laughs> to not agitate myself, I'm gonna try not to screw this up as we start to work on over oh, the other side of our bust here. So when this whole table shakes. There's a reason for that, because this uh, this sucker's a bit hefty. All right, let's get down into this here. Boom. This is exactly what we did on the other side. It started out just going over the... This is just some primer here. It's the Badger's Dino Res. A little bit of the Slate. Oh, I think we had a little bit of the Ebony Primer, too. We also used the sponges to remove some of these initial layers here. Let's work this in. Oh, look at that nice, I love, love me some of that brown matter. That is just, now I don't know how the name got truncated from the old brown matter elizin, but apparently it did. Apparently it did. 
no fuss, no moss. Now down here, let us go with a little bit more of our magenta here. Oh, maybe just a little touch of white, touch of white into that. Quinacrinol magenta, and away we go. Away we go. Doesn't have to necessarily mimic everything that we did on this side. Holy smokes, that's heavy. So that, that grunting and groaning, that's not like the oh, exasperation or fatigue. Well, I guess it's fatigue because the thing weighs a ton. Yes, it weighs a ton. Still bearing the bruises from earlier today. Yep, yep, that's what I was talking about. I, well, I did the raid, right? I, I ended the host, and then I forgot to end the stream because, well, I'd been doing that for seven hours, actually about seven and a half hours, and my brain was in full shutdown mode at that point, so it did not register the fact that, um, note to self, Oh, hey, that's now. This is why I'm saying thousand yards on English longbow. I don't need a compound bow. I don't need any wussy pulleys in my bow. Thank you very much. I don't need any of those wussy little pulleys because it's it's really fun. I'm gonna have like a left arm that is three times bigger than my right arm by tomorrow with this freaking thing. And it'd be different if there wasn't all these spikes, too. I mean, there's look at all these spikes sticking off of it. Those are also... Yeah, th those spikes are also sticking into my hand. So I, I basically compared it to put yourself on a bed of nails, which is probably not the most comfortable of relaxation points. And then to make it more interesting, I don't know, have a semi drive over the top of you while you're on that bed of nails. Look at that. Yeah, let's just drag this out here. Oh, this is going to be so much fun here doing some blends on this because now that this paint is sort of settled in, it's like it's been in the proving drawer, right? Paul Hollywood says, all right, you, you, don't, you didn't underprove it. You didn't overprove it. Let's get this out here and let's start working on it. Let's start doing stuff like, oh, blending stuff. I'm constantly going to be going back and forth here so you can see what we're going to do now. We've got Mr. another Mr. Blending Brush right here. Set her on her side. And let's just start moving this around. Had I done this a couple hours ago, that this, this works out very differently over here. Works out very differently. Look at how that just mixes together. Because a, a few folks, they have kind of been hasty with their, their blending. and But then they slow down and they say, man, you are right. You are right about kind of slowing down the process. You work on something big like this, right? It's one way to slow down the process. You literally slow yourself down. So back to our brown materialism. We will touch in a bit of our... Bit of our purple, bit of our raw umber in there. This is the process that began oh, around about 8, 12 hours ago. Yeah, 12 hours ago, this is what I was doing. I was doing this about 12 hours ago, just blocking in this, all oh, this big old color here. But then we took our sponges stuff like this we took some of that paint away took some of that away you will also see on the other side we went with our turquoise over the top of that particular little well I just call it a do thingy we were using lots of technical terms like that in the previous stream there were do thingies Figamajigs, whatnots, whatchamacallits. Also did get to use my fluorescent paints for the first time. 
I was, uh, it's like deja vu all over again. I was uh, reasonably pleased with the fluorescent orange, the fluorescent green. Eh, not super fantabulous on that. But look at the blending, right? Look at how quick that is. I <laughs> wasn't sure if it was a new scheme, or, or it, maybe it is. Maybe it really, Maybe I'm not actually here. Maybe this is someone else pretending to be me, who has an unusually ripped left arm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, that's what happens when you just, like, don't stop painting for 12 hours. Which is kind of like another day that ends in Y here. Really, I thought today... Well, it is Sunday today. What am I talking about? I just I kind of lose track of what day it is, what week it is. If you told me this was 2023, I'd be like, well, uh, all right. Mark, look at this. Look at this. We got CNC in the house again. How do we keep doing this? We just keep doing this. Thank you so much for the host. And there you go, the host with the most. It is the host of Rohan. We muster all of the Rohirrim, all nine of us. So we'll rotate this around so you can see what was going over here on this side. You can see we got some of that, some of our Thalo blue down in there. We need to do some similar stuff over here. Now I might need to put some more out, but one of the side benefits of the oils is the fact that, well, they just kind of keep on going. Yes, CNC, we are back at it. We are back at it. Now I don't know if you saw the, the picture that I... what is it? It's the thumbnail, right? I don't know if you can see it while you're actually watching this stream or not, but that was yeah, that was a nice little picture of this side with, you can see we got all of our veiny type things in there too. Holy smokes, that's heavy. My goodness. I'm going to get me some more of my Thilo blue in here. Interestingly enough though, that stuff should be, I'm going to say that should be still wet enough for, yes it is. It's been sitting there. That has virtually been untouched for almost... I want to say 10 hours, but the nice thing is, it's it's prime for blending. It is prime for blending. Look at that, just just like we're blending over here, literally green and orange together. We're doing that right here with our cerulean blue. You can also see we worked in some of our our red here. We're pulling this into here. We pulled some of our turquoise back in this way. We need to do some similar things over on this side. We also might do some other things on the lips here. Hey, we got Brent back in the house. Yeah, I'm. I <laughs> did you hear me talking a little bit ago about how I didn't even know the thing was still going on, and then then a really dear friend of mine messaged me and he said, uh, "Are you tired?" Now, what do you mean? Well, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, you know I'm pretty beat after that long stream. He said, yeah, you're still live, and you got raided. And I went, well, there was a non-YouTube compatible metaphor, or a few maybe, non-compatible YouTube metaphors, and I ran in here and uh, shut down the stream. That's why I'm back on here, because, well, sort of... Uh, feeling a little bit uh, <laughs> not happy about that. The fact that it was raided and stuff <laughs> with nobody here to acknowledge the raid. So, bonus coverage. I was going to stream during the day today. And I realize it is today. I mean, it's Sunday. It's today. It's during the day. I mean, this is part of Sunday. Heck, depending on where you are, it could be like 9.22 in the morning. Let's see. We are going to... I'm going to accelerate a little bit more of our... 
Yeah. You can see on this side how we carried a bit of the turquoise, a bit of the turquoise up into the carapace. We're doing that here. I also did want to show people the, the timing of this. All right, there is, well, not just in comedy, but in oil painting, timing is everything. And I'm just look, get, looking at this side here. Let's start to start to play around with our fluorescent orange. I mean, everything here is different. I mean, this this whole painting area is completely different than what it normally looks like. This palette is essentially upside down and about a foot and a half from where it normally is. So everything about this is freaking different. Oh, CNC, what are the key principles to keep in mind with working with oils? As, as you've heard me, and you will hear me say a billion times on all those videos, thicker paint will stick over thinner paint and vice versa. So right now, we're in this early phase, so we are working with the basically the thicker paint. Eventually, at a certain point, we're going to have to thin that paint down, and then we're going to have to go in reverse. Keith, that is, that is one of the biggest keys with the oil is the thick over the you always have to be aware of the consistency of your paint another critical thing is that every color is different and that's it's very appropriate because right now all i'm working with is i grab this fluorescent here and the quinacrinone i am mixing together probably two of the most transparent oil colors that you could possibly find this is not what people are used to. They're and they're used to okay. You're doing your imperial fist, right? You got your yellow, and it doesn't cover quite as much as what you would like. But a red is going to cover. A blue is going to cover. Oh no! I can use cerulean blue and blot out the sun. And I can use thalo blue, which is a whole lot darker, and it doesn't cover squat. So that is. That is the very unexpected thing that people are just not accustomed to when it comes to the oils. This, this fact that you can have such radically different properties to your paint. And we are was it, we're kind of building up to those oranges. Now, as we were working with this, and we got later in the process, and we were really charging along, we even got, and we were able to dive into the idea that thinner paint doesn't necessarily mean watered down paint. Thinner paint could also mean basically, practically paint right out of the tube, but it's paint that is very lightly scumbled onto the surface. That right there is thin paint. It's the, it's the same yet different than what we're doing right now. Bethany back in the house. This is the same bust at the other side. Now, part of this is just, well, I was going to stream a little bit later today. And you're still safe. There's no object source lighting. You're, you will still be safe. You are marked safe from Jim's object source lighting. But then I realized Kathy has to do her stream her podcast, right? Generally, once it gets to be five o'clock, I gotta any kind of stuff I'm doing on the internet has to be shut down, or at least starting to be. And I said, you know what? I might as well do this now, because there were some, there were some of the the European folks that were looking forward to maybe seeing this, and I thought, you know, maybe Sunday morning is a better plan than Sunday afternoon for them so here we are now look at this see how that's that's actually working nicely together if I had applied this on there now this we're starting to get you know the wet paint on top of the wet paint this is I already have to start watching this here I already got to keep an eye on this don't want to get that paint to build up too fast it, it can be thin in application. Actually, you can apply something that's very thin, very thickly, 
How does that sound? For <laughs> talking out of both sides of your face at the same time. It really is, I guess you just have to, nah, I was going to say abandon all hope. What you have to do is kind of forget about acrylics and just set that aside. Now see, in some of these areas, like right here, see where that green is and the orange there? That actually was really shiny not all that long ago. What I am going to do somewhere around here is one of these. I'm just going to use it as a blending brush. And that right there, oh my goodness. It looks like I just hit it now with an airbrush. If I had tried doing this one, even when the stream ended, if I had just do, did that a couple hours ago, not going to be it's it's just not going to work out so well it's that it's timing you always have to be aware of your timing and the way to control it is well work on something gigantic like this freaking thing as beef and the whole says it's the it's the bus that never ends uh, i'm going to try and get to that this week well this is also the test because i've never done this with my setup before as you can see, now I can basically get the entire thing in here. This was impossible. You saw, I was lucky to get like that much of him in the screen. But now he basically, especially if I have him this way, the whole thing fits on camera. So that was critical and finding a place for the palette over here. So basically this had to happen before the death elemental. And there are other, if you wonder why this the filming schedule or the the streaming schedule can be weird. Well, there's stuff like this, where <laughs> a friend of mine says, hey, we're doing this virtual convention. Could you basically do a Fort Wapple during it? That means plans get set aside for new plans. And then another company says, oh, gosh, you know, we're doing our Kickstarter thing. We're in the last two days of our campaign. We really need a boost. Could you do a live stream for us? So I apologize when you know, things that I might want to do get sort of set aside. But if you're wondering why that happens, that's why that happens. <laughs> that, that is, uh, well, what, what is it they say? You know, life gets in the way. That is like painter life getting in the way. Now look at this. Let's play. Let's play. Now I can't do too much down here again because basically she's resting on this. I'm going to bring in my very gentle. Look at how I'm holding the brush. I got two fingers on the brush. Uh, let's see. So much has happened under the A. Pigeon is back around again. We meet again. Thanks so much for rejoining here. Especially after me forgetting to <coughs> sorry, shut down the stream earlier. So, yeah. We're just working on the other side here. And believe it or not, what I learned on the other side, using these fluorescent paints, this is already, actually I'm glad I didn't do the death elemental because I was hoping to use the fluorescence on that. Now, we've, thank you so much for the cheer, Brent. And since my hand is not full of oil paints, Wapelia well, Spellbrush, he's going to drink some liquor. Hey, you can see how little of my lights are on right now. And look at the shadow that he's casting. You don't usually see that. You don't usually see that. Now let's get some of our... Again, those those references that you see off to the right and to the left. Oh, right, it was a perfect opportunity to get our cheer out. Yes. Thank you so much for that. Now, did any, <laughs> are any of you guys... Did you see the uh, when she was getting fed during the last stream? Yeah, she was fed some of Kathy's delicious uh, peanut butter cookies. She was also fed some beef and rice. Look at this. Those spikes are actually tearing apart this, uh, <laughs> my chamois cloth there. So just imagine what that's doing to my skin. Oh, look at this. So I have definitely learned, oh my gosh. I have definitely learned some valuable lessons about this fluorescent paint. 
you learn some every freaking time. Oh, yes, the cookies. Hey, she ate them all. What, what can I say? She ate all the stinking cookies. Didn't leave any for me. Man, that wasn't very nice. Here I'm spent all these hours cradling her in my hand while she stabs me with her spiky things. And what do I get in return? I get all my cookies eaten. All my cookies eaten. All right. You see the red that's in their temples there. Let us see if we can move some of that along here. That is some of my secondary palette here somewhere. That's some of my cadmium red. Cadmium red deep. And that's going to go down in this area here. Let's move her back just a scotch. I'm also going to work on this shoulder here and get some of the greens into that one. We start working with our green. Oh, look at that deep red. Look at that. There's your cadmium red deep doing its thing. Being all cadmium red like. That's about some more cadmium red over here. This is so bizarre because to you it just looks like I'm working on my palette the normal way. I mean, quite literally, someone who has seen this, like you guys, a bunch of times, you would not think anything is amiss, but this palette is oriented in a completely different way. This is the top. This is the bottom, instead of this being the lower left-hand corner. That's hilarious. Yeah, there was uh, basically ground beef, lentil soup, and rice all together. Now, how far did that red go? Oh, okay, I went all the way to the temple here. And I was just to, well, hey, peanut butter cookies, right? So protein in there. And then you had your rice, and then you had your beef, and you had your lentils. So there was lots of uh, protein there, uh, which I definitely did not mind whatsoever. Okay, greens. Let's do greens. However, learning our lesson from the last time, this is what you, I think you're going to see a little bit more on the death elemental here. So you will see the thalo green fortified with the fluorescent. Such, oh yeah, such a difference that makes. Huge difference, my goodness. What was I thinking before? Maybe I wasn't. Maybe I just wasn't thinking. Maybe the brain was off. Heh. <laughs> Not like that's never happened before. Oh, look at that. Look at that nice juicy green down in there. Shall we do this again? I think we shall. Boom. One brush stroke. Come back for more. One brush stroke. This this is the other thing too. Uh, C and C with the oils. Be direct, if not precise. Be concise. One brush stroke. One brush stroke. Uh, precision's good. Decision is better. Oh, please, someone write that down for me. Somebody send me a whisper with that. That is that's got to be in the book of Wapple. I don't even remember what I just said. Well, at least this one won't be seven hours long, so maybe I can go back and find it. But that oh, that's gonna be another wonderful book of Wapple saying. Oh, that's probably about chapter fifteen by now. Look at this. Some of that green in there. Then we've got, as always, we have some secondary brushes here. This is why we just do the one brush stroke. Leave it. Precision is good. Decision is better. Ah, oh, I mean, that's merch. That's merch right there. That's merch. Somebody would think we're like, I don't know, an engineering stream or something like that. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at that. I'm having so much fun with this. So much easier than this side, where it was back and forth and back and forth. A death struggle. This was very fun here. We got to do some of this, too, on her face. So before I get too far engaged over in here, 
we will also have some fun with some of the facial features. Now here you can see we're kind of going a little bit opposite here. We've got some orange here. Where there's orange on one side, there's green. That is, def that is just, uh, that's like super quote. Oh, maybe. Now here's the thing. Okay, a question. So I did for the channel points, right? Not cha the chat points. I, I made some emotes. I think I did three of them. One of uh, the first one is Sweet Home Chicago. The second one is the One True Brush, and then the last one is the Builder of the Pyramid. And there's supposed to be emotes with those. I'm just guessing those haven't been approved yet because people have redeemed those rewards. Yet I have not seen those emotes pop up. And near as I can figure, that's why I haven't seen them. It's just for whatever reason, I guess they have to be approved. So look forward to that. Look forward to more emotes. But the other thing I'd like to, well, pfft, someday when Jim has a stream deck and has buttons he can press, because trust me, the keyboard is entirely inaccessible and will always be. There's no room for a keyboard here. At least not a safe place for a keyboard. A stream deck, however, that could be mounted somewhere, like literally over my head. I could hang it off the freaking ceiling if I have to. And then I'd, I'd like to have some kind of a GIF play, or, or you know, there's a little, basically a, a page from the Book of Wapple when someone redeems their chat point rewards. I would like that very much to happen. I don't know if that's a doable thing. Them's that are more familiar with that part of this old Twitch operation, they'll have to tell me that. So again, we're going to spin this around. You can see we've got those warmer greens and yellows on that side. Wow, that's heavy. Okay, I'll set this down. Jeez, now I'm actually having to lift this with my right hand too. Well, then, then it's going to be like equally buff, right? Then we won't just be buff on the left hand. Uh, peak time here. Time to catch this one later. Well, thank you very much, but now you, I will... <laughs> it might take several videos, but I will try to... Uh-oh. Drax is raiding. Well, thank you very much again, Bentley, for joining me a second time. It's appreciated. Wait a minute now. Was Drax doing a stealth st a stream here? Hey, Drax, I didn't see you... I've been looking for you all night. I didn't see you streaming. You, that is just the darndest thing. Because I kept all oh, Drax has to be streaming tonight. And I'm looking, I'm looking, I didn't see. So I do apologize if I didn't join you. It's just because I... I don't know. Twitch is being Twitch. And didn't say that, that you were... Well, so I feel bad. Sorry about that. Now, I was just saying how... From the initial use of the fluorescence over here, uh, well, the oil. So hopefully it worked out. You know, each time you use those, you get some fun new insight. Like I just got a major new insight with these fluorescents. So on the other side there, it's just there was the way things I was trying to do with them that I thought should work did not work. On this side, using the kick in the valuable parts that was delivered earlier today. I'm taking a whole different approach with the fluorescence and getting a whole a whole lot of better results with that. So yes indeed. So I'm just amazed at what's possible here. This, this is the same stuff. There is no difference in the material. It's just that the timing is different, the combos are different. And man, I am very much pleased with the difference. So now I'm actually I'm really glad that I didn't wait till, I don't know, tomorrow. Well, it wouldn't have been tomorrow morning. Oh, Drax, I still need to get the link to the orange and green. So the fluorescent ones, uh, that's at Marion Street. Oh, geez, and I just closed down there their whip hopefully I can I can find this again but it's Marion Street well like I told you there's 
there's like old defunct sites with their stuff like maybe their old web store or something that just I mean you click on stuff nothing happens so I will try and get you those uh hello little hobbits spark my ganja oh thank you very much for the follow pighead Gandalf approves I just I still can't get over the difference here from this side to this just the ease of use one side to the other wow so vastly different now what are we gonna do here Let, let's do some of our little things on her face here let's get some of the we had a cerulean blue out here hmm not quite sure if we want it that subdued again what we got here underneath her eye there let's do a similar thing over here except I do believe we need a little bit of our ultramarine into that or thalo blue sorry yes 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 touch thalo blue into that I'm gonna need my I'm gonna need my tertiary palette I already went through my primary and secondary already down to my tertiary Oh, thanks, Drax. It is... I really didn't think... When I first started using oils, I thought the one thing that wouldn't be possible is is that. The the bright colors. The Zinchi stuff, right? I mean... Like what you were doing with the demons. Actually, I hope those guys are all done, by the way. With their glowy bases and stuff. That's the kind of stuff I thought, well, yeah, you know, you can't do that with the oils. You can do a lot of other stuff. But you can't do that. But look at this. It just starts to... Look at what you can just do with this blending. It just brings tears to your eyes. There would be more tears in my eyes if I had been able to eat some chocolate-covered raisins earlier today. Look at that. And so we're just... We're taking those and we just pull those out nice and gentle like and then we'll go in here with our thalo and let's do those reinforcement dots right here in the center of those a little bit thinner not too thin though we don't want those to just be sitting there like a blob hey draconis visions i, I had a few ugh. Don't don't tempt me, cause those cookies—they're sitting right outside this room right now. Of course, <laughs> it ain't gonna be that long from now that uh, some folks might think it's not all that unreasonable to be eating breakfast. Uh, you know what? Oh, look at that! Let's get some of that blue. Yeah, I like this idea here. So. This is subject to change all the time. I mean, there might be all kinds of changes done to this thing. But now we've got to... We're starting to reflect the two sides of the face together. I do need some uh, some spot action going on in this area right over here. So I'll move this so my big ugly hand is not quite in the way. Which orange and green are you using for the shell? That's the key is that it's not just those fluorescents, they are actually they are part of a larger horde of colors. I'm actually mixing the fluorescent orange with the magenta color here. That's one of the keys right there. Those two together are needed. Also mixing the orange with some of the so we got cad yellow deep over here. You can see I'm pointing to that cad yellow light and actually did mix it with the cad red like right here so that's the same cadmium red deep that you have as part of the starter set same one oh it's a 345 here it's 247 here we got a techno cat in the house how are you doing yeah i just i needed to do a a late night stream here as well the stupid thing of not ending the stream the first time anyway aside just uh, yeah that that had me 
I had me thinking, why in the world did I do something like that? And I just, I had to, I had to just do another stream here. I had to do another one. Just to kind of get that taste out of my mouth. Is that, oh, going into my, my ultramarine violet over here. Boy, this is a color I barely had a chance to use. And I've really had a chance to find out some of its goodness on this particular bust here. The fluorescent green, that I was having a lot of success if I mixed it with my phthalo green. So on its own, it was practically worthless. But I mixed it with a little bit of cerulean blue, a little bit of that phthalo blue, and that, that changed everything. Oh, it's only 1247 there, so that must be Pacific time. I, it's not Pacific time. It is the uh, beyond Pacific time. Whatever that is, I don't know. I barely remember Central time. So, yeah, some of our purple blending with the green. Nice and easy. So what is that? Uh, more precision. Let's see, what was it? Uh, I gotta scroll up to see what that thing was. So it could, so it's in my head here. Uh, yeah, precision is good. Decision is better. Mountain standard is not. Ah, okay. Ah, uh, no daylight savings time. Yeah, that is. That is also the bane of my existence. Because well, when you keep the hours that we do. And all of a sudden, you're like, yeah, you just lost an hour. That gets uh, somewhat cruel, to say the least. Somewhat cruel. We are going to take a little bit more of our titanium white. We'll put that into our... I think if I rotate it this way, you'll get a little bit less of a shine. Which is fine, because I can reach this easier now. What amazes me is how li look at how little shine there. I, I know the lights are bouncing off of it, but to me live, that practically looks like it's dry oil paint right there. Which also that also connotates some success because it means we were able to not have too much of a buildup of paint. Because that's another way you know when you've got too much of a buildup of paint. When after a few hours, you don't have that at least starting to look like it's getting a little bit drier. That's when you know it's like, oh, put too much on there. Oh, yes. Yeah, beef and all. It's Wapple o'clock somewhere. I think it should just be everywhere. I mean, I seriously just think that all clocks should just be set to my time. I mean, it would be far more convenient for the entire world, I think. I truly think it would be. And I truly think I want some more. So this actually still has some of the fluorescent green in it. Now it's also got some of the phthalo blue. And that makes a nice, a delicious color that's going to get blended right into here. Spin it around. Aha, uh -huh. we have. While we've got our thalo here, we're going to try and deliver some of those little spot type things. I mean, it literally, it's, hey, it's Wapple o'clock somewhere. It's got to be. It's got to be Wapple o'clock everywhere. Get some of the. Now, I don't want these to be spaced too evenly. However, I also want to let the wet oil paint that there's still wet oil paint there on that cheek that was applied hours ago. And by hours ago, somewhere in the neighborhood of five to six hours ago, maybe even more. So we've got that. What's happening down here? No spots, but also darker. And we have some have some cracks to deliver here. Let's do that. We've got our and I'm think. Look at this. 
There's actually some of the stuff on my palette, it's dry. Look at this. There's no paint there on my finger. That's just a matter of hours. Oils can and will dry quicker than you think. Especially when you're starting out at basically half strength. Now, I'm just getting my hand positioned here. There we are. Thin paint sticks over thicker paint, vice versa. Just a place to steady my hand, gentle with the brush, drag out some of these veins here. Hold on to our face. Ah, let's do this. Let's do this. Pop it in one. One round here, get her centered, reasonably centered, so you can see what's going on. Restore some of our darks in here, too. We were doing some of our pin and panel line washes, too, in the other, during our earlier session. with some very fun result. Look at this here, look at that. Just a nice little very gentle brush stroke. Right there, we got that little crack there. It becomes a smaller crack. We engineer that out the sides here. Not quite sure why those cracks are there. They just, uh, they just happen to be there. So, I'm tone these down just a bit. Got to be careful. If you're going to get paint build up on the brush, you've got to get rid of some of that paint build up. This is where we stretch these out. We soften some of these, the kind of furthest extents of the liner, the happy little cracks. Well, these were the happy little exterior brain masses that we said, right? And the happy little jugular veins that if you slice them open, they bleed happy little blood cells all over the place. But see, that's where her brains live. They live outside the head because they're happy little brains. And that's where they live. We also need to get some of those, see those lighter, and see we got some more of those little veins going on that side. Yeah. That's heavy. Yeah. This thing went from 20 to 25 pounds quickly, escalated to 800 pounds really fast. Feels like even more now. Now here, I'm not going to necessarily put too much more of the white spirits into this. Thin is okay, but... If it's too thin, it's just going to ride on the surface. It's not going to pick up what's underneath there and blend. Because we do we do want to have a little bit of blending with this. Now, this is we got some thicker paint that's going to happen here. I think if I tilt it this way, yeah, you can see. Look at that. Look at that nice, deep, not a, necessarily a blood red color, but a very burgundy color. That is your purple matter. It's like the purple of brown matter. Oh, that sound. All right, let's get, oh yeah, let's really get down in here with some of our darks. It, I'll take a little bit of that magenta too. Some really fun colors down in here. And I do apologize for swinging this over here so maybe you can't quite see what's happening, but it's kind of necessary. Let's get some of these darks down in here. You can actually, I think, see a little bit more of the of the brain stuff there, which could be fun. Here, let's grab a... I'm looking for a brush that's got enough of our magenta in it. We'll do this. Some of the brown matter again. Right down in here. It's really... Get some of our umber, 
thin this down so we get some coverage like we need. Let's see. <laughs> the whole video is repeating. It's uh, deja vu all over again. Now let's go to our... Let's take some of the purple in here. Yes, some of the purple here. Let's get that to our neck. We didn't really... Actually, this is the one part we haven't gotten to yet. We have not gotten to this part. He's not this part of the... Ah, look at that nice little magenta there. Onto our external brains. <laughs> Whatever the heck those are supposed to be. Now we'll mix. And actually, I'm taking here. This is a, a brush that has already some of the thalo and the crimps, or some of the thalo and the uh, cerulean in it. So that's a little bit different, because well, the yeah, actually, this is a this is a little bit different on this side than it was over here. Okay, so good to know. Good to know. I'm going to take just a touch my white and we shall lighten this up over here again. Working on the neck down here. Grabbing a little bit of that ultramarine violet so that it doesn't get too turquoise. We will work a bit more of our cerulean into this. Where? Yeah, let's go down into here. It's a nice big old brush stroke there. Let that work its way in. Uh, I jumped back ten seconds and repeated a thing that I just done. Well, I guess there was there was some weird bitrate things that I see. There's a couple of dips. It should be normal now. I don't know why there would be weird internet things happening, but then who the heck knows? <laughs> I have no idea. I don't know if anybody knows why the internet does what it does. Heck, there was like a whole solid week where there was people I know they just couldn't stream at all. It didn't matter what they did tech wise, the tech just did not cooperate. It was like tech week from tech week from hell. Again, you can't really see what's happening. I'm just throwing some colors over there. And to spin it back this way again. Might actually zoom this out a bit. So it's a little easier for you guys to see. Now we'll take some of that titanium white. We mix it in with our magenta. Let's start to get some lighter stuff going on here. So I don't know why it's doing that. And maybe it's just on yours because it's not doing that on mine. And now, I, if, if somebody else can say if it's happening to them, I mean, what is it, refresh or something like that? See if that matters. Because I'm just seeing new stuff here on mine. I am not seeing a repeat. There we go. We can continue here. Lighten this up some more. And I also have to remember to you know, think about my greens and oranges here. It just can't all be the turquoise and magentas in this area. we got to think beyond just that. It, it's interesting. I do sort of like having the palette over here in this area. The only problem is that is where my mouse has been for, I don't know, <laughs> since I started doing this any recording or streaming over here years ago which leads to some hilarity so we've got here 
in the neck. I'm just going to ditch this thing because that just keeps getting caught. So you can see what we did there in the neck. Let's going to try and do some of that over here. Nice little tendrils of the magenta that will just sort of blend in nice and easy. Let's have a little transition here. This is where I want to do some zinchi stuff with the oils because you know, here it's more of a turquoise. Down here it becomes magenta. It's just a couple of brush strokes. They're all I need to be able to blend all that. It's just too freaking easy. Now we're back to our, again, this is the fluorescent green. We've got it here. This is a little bit of that cadmium green, which I think is in the starter set. I do believe it is in that starter set. And I'm going to drop some of that right in here. Oh, some of that over here, too. Again, we're trying to mirror all of the fun, insane colors on that side. Here, let's do some of our green in here. This is what we did last time around, too. Now, while I'm thinking about it, I'm going to put some of my brown matter out here. Yep, that's the brown matter. You're going to go right over here. This is one of those colors that uh, is on the pricey side. As I mentioned, I think I, I did say that that one color probably cost more than an entire six color starter set did by itself. Uh, the Viridian was in the starter. What about... Oh, yeah, yeah. Permanent green. That's what was in the starter. I don't think... The, yeah, this is one that I just got, I think. Yeah, that was not in the starter set. So, we'll go back to some of our... Just applying some darks down in here. We got our brown matter, which I'm also going to use a little bit of the white spirits to thin down. Let's get a little touch of my purple and there maybe even a touch of the magenta. Slam that down, get that primer covered, which we're then we're actually gonna bring back in just a second. So this right here is because it's so deep and I, I think I can work in this area and not have to worry about flipping this over or anything like that because uh, it's just going to rest on these spikes now that I think about it. So I think this area should be okay for working on. Oh, what the heck? I'm going to grab a little bit of my phthalo green. Put that in here too. Just work in this. Nice and dark. You must have dark if you want to have light. You can have all the bright, intense colors you want. Won't do you a darn bit of good if there is no actual dark colors around it. Yeah, I'm even going to bring in a little burnt sienna here. We haven't really done that very much. So we'll bring some of that in here. Nice and down and dirty, like you do. Let's grab her. You know, I could even I can even use this type of sponge here. Look at that. It takes it away just like the other sponge. It's probably going to remove even more because it is just a more solid sponge. Uh, it's a bunch of different things. It's the fluorescent green, the phthalo green. It's also some of these different greens here. It's just, you're never really using just one thing by itself, especially when it's something so translucent. Aha, uh -huh. I have, I, it is part of the starter set. No, no, that's the other one. That is not the bright green. So that just must have been one. Aha, uh -huh. I found it. I found it. So it's this one. Cadmium green pale. That's another thing that I'm mixing in to the greens. 
Oh, I needed a sponge over here. To do this. Look at how much that takes away. And it leaves behind some of the primer, which is handy. Boom. There you go. Let's set her down this way. I also want to see what I can do. I want to get some stuff here on the lips. Some more precision on there. Which means I also need some of my thalo, thalo blue. I think I even mixed some thalo blue with that uh, fluorescent green too. It's the Thunderdome. Well, basically, like everybody that's in here, Drax, Thunderdome, Kitten and Karamite, you got to you got to give them all follows. And I do shout outs, but my hands already got oils all over them, and I have no access to a keyboard, so. People can do self shout outs if they wish. But now I'm going to use my hand as a mall stick here. I'm going to try and work in a couple of darker lines in here because this is. That's had a little while to kind of cure. So hopefully, Thunder did. Uh, well, I know Robin is not quite done yet, but I know you had another piece that you're also working on and once again auctioneer extraordinaire Thunderdome drew he didn't realize that he was like an expert auctioneer but man did he do some wonders the other night to benefit a fellow streamer in need it was a magical thing we need some of these little dots over there which means, where is my purple matter? That's going to head back out onto the palette here. But I have done so much with the oils here. I am, I'm going to have to start refilling some jars. I already had to redo my white. <laughs> Empty that sucker out. Hey, Davek, how's it going? Uh, it was passable at best uh, that people were the real rock stars. Andre Cohen says he actually went to school for auctioneering. It is definitely... There is a method to that madness. I do remember, well, before we ever did miniatures, and I did convention art shows, every art show had an auction at the end of it, and that was always a bit on the crazy side. There's, let me get some of these little dots over here. Let's do that. Again, it is thin enough. Having these small dots also then takes some of these softer blends underneath it and starts to set those down. I can even start to extend this into areas over here. Yeah, because, wow, look at this. If Again, if I had tried doing this, what I'm doing right here during that first session, not going to be so effective not going to be so effective. Oh, let's see. Uh, I think what we know is ridiculous for laws, and we need to know what we sell. Had to learn the and oh yeah, had to learn the antiques. Well, you had folks here. Now, of course, once they got to know you and your art, it was a little bit different. But sometimes, yeah, you you had an auctioneer that didn't necessarily know what it was they were trying to auction off, and. That, that sometimes led to a little bit of hilarity. I'm just going to push that around a bit here. Let's take some of our cerulean. Using my secondary palette. Just didn't want too many dots there. Too many can be too many, and that happens in a hurry. That's about a few more right up in here again. Don't want to just mirror what's on the other side. We want some individual little difference between the two sides. But the more the, the spots that we have up there, the more, as I said, more of that separation we get. Let's see. 
Just had to grab a drink there of something. Yeah, she actually she drank some of my Riesling. She ate some of my cookies. She was really... She was cheeky, that's for sure. She even ate some of my regular supper, too. That's a pretty demanding bust for something that weighs 800 pounds. Now, what? let's get some more definition right here, too. Yes, that is not a bad thing to have. And the nice thing is that it's not just going to be not just going to be an outline. We can take that and we are going to spread the love. We're going to spread that out here like you do. Man, it's been hours since I put that paint there. And it is just at that sweet blending stage. Look at that. We just push that around. And this cadmium red over here. Wow, look at Look at how that is on the camera there. Now, this is another thing. It's it's the stuff that's around it, too, that helps it be quite so, have that kind of impact. Would not have quite so much impact if it wasn't for all those nice, deep, rich darks around it. Look, we're taking some of these spots here. And we are starting to fade some of these out into our wet oil paint. Always got to remember, though, to take some of that paint off of the brush if we're going to do that sort of thing. Because every single dot having a hard edge, we don't want that. Maybe. Boom. Let's do that. Let's get that in a bit closer. And then I think you can see what's starting to happen with some of these little spots right here. Oh, uh, let's see. I <laughs> the face and paint for the Avatar movie. Yeah, this wasn't really necessarily... It just kind of turned into that, didn't it? It really has gone all Avatar. It wasn't the intention, but boy, it sure worked out that way. Like I said, some of the... In the gallery that I saw, there were folks that really went all wood elf with this. It looked more wood nymph than anything else. They actually added gems and jewels to it. No, thank you very much. I appreciate that. It really does. It means a lot, especially in something like this, which I've just, again, the only other. I painted a couple of half-size busts before. And that was the first half-life-size bust that I ever painted. But that was, that was a little different situation. I was painting that up at Gen Con a couple years ago. So one of the other, oh yeah, there's the other one. So that is the that's also at this size. That's that carapace thing sticking off the back of her head. That thing by itself must have weighed ten pounds. Just that thing sticking off the back of her head. That was crazy. I think I, oh I painted that thing twice. I painted it once at Gen Con. And then again here, actually I have the painting of that second one on my YouTube channel. Yeah, yeah, you can you can go check that out there. Yeah, that's it. look at this. Look at those spots that were they were kind of just too much and now each one of them has a little different level of intensity. Some of those knocked out, some of them more faded, some of them got a sharper edge. Go back into these with some really deep rich Thalo blue, if I can. I target three of them. One, two, and three. It's going to happen in here. It's going to happen in here. I think we're going to move some of these guys around too. Yeah. They're still wet enough to move around, which is very cool. Very cool. And I, I think what's going to happen up there? I know we've got our... No, let's not have a brush sitting underneath there. Some more has to happen up here. I'm 
I'm gonna go. You know what? Let's have some of our uh, our brain color up here, maybe. As we were starting to do that, it's gonna be right along this area here. Angry Ham. Those other two look cut darn amazing. This one here, I've I I enjoy just the fact of look at this. Getting to me all these nice dark crazy or light crazy colors in here. Well, there's so much. Look at all the action here. Look at all this texture. It just kind of screams out for it. There's there's so much going. The other ones, yeah, there there's stuff going on. But this one, every time you turn around, there is a whole nother thing happening with this one. Now, where's the where's something for blending here? Just feather that slightly, like you do. A little bit of our purple mix in. Who enters my domain? Steep tea enters my domain. Another really fun, really fun streamer that you should give a follow to, Steep T, because his tea is always steeping. Yes, indeed. Now, did you get to finish your your Kingdom Death figure? That is the question. That's the question I want to know. That was your goal by the end of that stream. I, I hope you were able to accomplish it. I know you were really, really blasting away at that thing, trying to get that done. And uh, yeah, sorry that I had to jump out of your stream there. It was very fun. It was, I do appreciate, it was definitely something that I needed to refresh after doing this for seven plus hours. So I really thank you very much for a very pleasant streaming experience there. And now for the raid, it is appreciated. We've got a little bit of our purple in on this now. Mixing in with our magenta. And now some purple over all of our turquoises and blues. Like you do. And let's just look at that in a different light. Oh, thank you. Now this is, uh, this is some of the insanity that took place in the early part of the stream. All of... Uh, all of this with the fluorescent paints and we've got exterior brains over here we've got her we got her lips over here all kinds of fun stuff hey it's Verand Vedrin how you doing I remember you from steeping the tea there let's get a little bit of blending going on in here too yeah let's do that Hello, little hobbits. Spark my ganja. <laughs> Thank you so much for the file of Vendrant. That is appreciated. So this thing right here, <laughs> when we started this at around 2 o'clock in the afternoon, it had as much paint on it as this. I mean, basically that's what it was. It was just primer. There was nothing on this thing. It also went from being a 20 to 25 pound bust to a 970 pound bust. Hey, Valandar the Red, this is a one-half scale bust. One-half scale, and for the folks that didn't get to see, these are some of the other one-half scale busts. There's one, and there's the other. But this one's the first one that I had a chance to paint in oil. Now here, where the heck did you go? Okay. This is that same seal bust, but it's also in oils, but this is one-eighth scale, I believe. This one was a little more manageable. She says, heck yeah. He says, heck yeah. Let's get her back over here and let's let's play up in here some more. Let's play up in here some more. Hello, let's get little hobbits. Spark my ganja. Oh, thank you for the follow, Angry Ham. That's appreciated. Now that's got now this has a little touch of blue in it. Got some of that cerulean in there. Changes that up just a touch. We've got a lot of red going on. A lot of red. Let's get some blue in here. And in some cases it may just register as gray. I know people still 
look at me sideways when I tell him that you mix purple and green together, you get some spectacular gray. Painted an entire five-headed reaper dragon with object source lighting featuring purple and green to make gray. I want to make sure on this side we have a nice healthy thalo green over ah I said I have to do the oh I did do that over so I think I need some more thalo green up over in here we can do that because so uh, we got thalo green we've got a little bit of our titanium white we mix these together not gonna put a whole bunch of actually not really putting any of my white spirits in here. Uh, let's see. Uh, Tony Moo, I thought it was a 2D painting. Well, thank you very much. I also, well, I know that uh, Steep T saw some of the 2D art from that previous life that I talked about. But I've got something right here. You'll find this of interest. Set her down. Using the same oil paints, the same brushes, the same everything. We painted this, so this is going to be a dice bag. Imagine that wrapped around like that, but we painted that in oils on a... It's actually by my last... Hey, my gun, we got Fabled Grim joining us here. So that was uh, that was all painted in 2D using the exact same oil paints. And I'll be doing more of that too. I'll be doing some more of those dice bags. Because that was fun. But in the meantime... I'm going to throw out some more of my oils. Again, this is the oil paint, the white spirits, but you hear that sound? That is a little piece of pewter in there, otherwise known as a homemade agitator. Now, I had a couple other. Now, these are some smaller items also painted with oils. This was actually my one of my first streams back in April. I think it was April 13th, one of the first official real streams, also painted in oils. So for the, if you're wondering, can you, oh, and then if you look at some of the VODs, this one still exists. So here's our, our Dothraki Screamers that we painted in oils. This is where we tested our brown matter alizarin on that one. That was really fun. Let's get you out of harm's way over here. All right. We'll take our well-developed now left arm here support this darn thing as best as we can. Oh, I'm gonna get some some thinning into that. Let's see if we can't get ourselves some brighter colors into here. Uh, let's see. Oh, Angry Ham has been on that site before. I, th I could see it being a new one because I don't really remember seeing it myself. I really don't. Hello, little hobbits. Spark my ganja. Thank you so much for the follow, Raven. Still, that is appreciated. That is appreciated here. Let's uh, move some of this around like we've been doing before. Again, a little bit of blending. That happens with one of our many blending brushes. And if you are... Let's get this palette out of the way over here curious about the brushes that we have been using we are using you can see how expensive 12 of those are that's basically the primary brush that I use uh, all the time whether it's acrylics whether it's oils no matter what it is let's get into some of our darks again I'm gonna take a touch of that phthalo green mix it with my magenta which ironically enough makes a fantastic dark jade type color because we've been adding our lights in here, but now, now let's think about some really rich darks right in there. Again, precision, decision over precision, or good decisions lead to precision. Hello, little hobbits. Spark my ganja. As Hail Vectron has also followed, thank you so much. That is appreciated. And what I'm also appreciating is the lovely darks that the purple magenta, uh, the purple matter 
and that wonderful phthalo green can provide. However, now I'm going to even go, I'll go further into the realm of that's around about 95% thinner as opposed to paint. And what that is going to do is do a little bit of that panel line wash. Let's do some of that over here. Uh, hopefully, as we do this, you'll see right in this area over here. I'll move this down. So you can see you're on that care. Look at that. You see how we just touch it there? It's a it's a very different type of glazing with the oils than it is, say, with your look at this, I'm just touching it there and it does its own thing. Touch it there, you leave it go. Oh, Davik is painting Royal Guard at the moment. Well, that's very convenient because I am converting some regular Rohan riders into Royal Guard because well, the plastic ones are close enough and with a few additions I can make those, I don't know, seven or eight dollar plastic figures take the place of 30 dollar Royal Guard figures and they'll look a little bit different. They won't look like everybody else's Royal Guard. Oh, uh, let's see. Uh, it looks either aquatic or draconic, mostly aquatic. It Well, when I looked up what this was, I kept seeing Nautilus shells and see those two shells in the, the references over here? That's what popped up when I typed in the name. I didn't see any kind of character. I saw those things for whatever reason. Uh, decision over precision is easier to remember. Well, I do actually have stickers uh, from the Book of Wapple. I already have, if a color goes somewhere, it must go everywhere. I also have another sticker for you cannot take the voyage of discovery if you never get on the boat. Here, look at this. Literally touching that there. I'm going to let the oils do their thing. You guys do what you do. However, you don't have to just unleash them and leave them alone. You can mess around with those too. Now, best example is over here. We can take some of this. Look at this. We'll take our glaze. We're going to pull that glaze out. Look at that. No more harsh edge there. Do that right along here too. Right here, same thing. Just pull that edge along like you do. Bam, look at that. So hopefully tonight, I well, tonight, this morning, I remember to actually turn off the stream instead of letting it go for another, I don't know, half hour or so. That was just, uh, that's hilarity right there. But right now, I'm just enjoying some of that nifty little blending. I'll turn this over on its now. You can see some of it. Let's do some of that here, too. Again, that is a very simple mix of the brown, uh, the purple matter, and the alizarin, uh, sorry, the phthalo green. Look at that nice, rich darks in here. Look, look at how it just seeps in all little nooks and crannies. All I did was touch it. That's all I had to do. Oh, thank you so much, Dusty Manston. That is appreciated. Let's see. Why wouldn't purple and green make uh, gray? That's It amazes me how people are so shocked by it. And we're not talking about people that have never painted before. Some of these are folks that have been painting for quite a while, and it never occurred to them that, well what's in what's in green what's in purple you're effectively making a black and out of the blue and brown and then you're also then lightening it a bit so why would it not make a really fun gray it's just that it's going to be a gray with more color to look at that so it's finding all the little nooks and crannies right there so nice uh, stream yourself sleeping this time. So, well, actually, there there have been times where I have woken up and I've been, I thought I was filming a video. I think actually there was one time that I woke up and I thought I was actually streaming something. Yeah, I think actually, I think Kathy might have even had that dream too. 
not not kidding actually serious about that look at that see we're gonna just I'm gonna take a little bit of my white spirits I'm just gonna look at I can drag this around doing so many fun things oh, let's see I'm just making sure I've gotten let's see what kind of creature is this lady I don't know this is called the Caracolila bust I usually they do movie characters but I I didn't see any kind of related movie thing for this now of course also the Angelique bust like uh, this one here there is no so movie based on that uh oh sorry I just cut off a uh, I just cut off a sub here we go here we go sorry to cut off the sub thank you so much for the sub that is appreciated Oh, look at this. We have an Art of Mike at Disney here. Hey there. Uh, speaking of people you should follow, you should follow Art of Mike Disney because uh, now that that dragon is here, uh, we'll be arranging a multi-stream between the two of us. Yes, indeed. We shall do that. And thank you so much for that sub. Oh, it's a tier two sub at that. Thank you so much. Here, let's get some of our. Wow, look at that. This looks like it's a light color. It looks like I'm actually putting a highlight over the top of this. Not so. If you're looking at, say, value one through 10, that's barely a four. But because of, you know, let's turn it this way so you don't get so much of a glare. Because we managed successfully to get so much dark around it, it looks, it would appear much lighter. Objects in screen appear lighter than they really are. <laughs> so again, yeah, we're see all of those turquoises and golds and such. Uh, actually, I, uh, well, I will. I'll let Mike take over that part because Mike knows all the info far better than I do. So, Mike, you can you take it away. You become chat boss. Yeah, there's. Uh, I gotta fix one horn on it, and then I well, I gotta glue him to his little base. And I do believe fall was the theme that we had discussed for this one. So I'm even going to maybe look for some foliage to put on that of an appropriate na nature. Uh, how about how about a little bit more of a yes, right there. We'll let that mix together as you do. But I have to remember, you know, I've got those glazes that are sitting there. Yep, I can, I've just, as I was doing my little bit of feathering on this, I, I was reminded there was a glaze there. We are trying to have two different sides, because it's not sculpted. This is not just flipped over digitally one side Hello, to the other. Little hobbits, spark my ganja. <laughs> We have Katniss. Thank you so much for the follow. That is appreciated. Now we've... Ah, oh, we did. Okay. I was extending out some of this phthalo green over here. Which I want to make sure that gets in there. My cerulean blue nicely there. Do I also need to think about some lighter... Something lighter on the end of her nose. We shall do something along those lines here. It's just going to look like kind of a white dot to you folks, but it will be more than that. So we'll throw this out so here. Hopefully that all. does not... Uh-oh. We have Deagle. Daigle, thank you so much for the subscription. We will greet you with Wapelia Spellbrush. Thank you so much. As he drinks from his glass of goodness, his glass of pyramid goodness. Thank you so much for that. It is appreciated. Now, you can see there's a little nasty edge there. Let's make that nasty edge go all the way like you do. 
sort of like this. Just pull away at the edge of that, and now it starts to blend. We blend the sharpness away. We've got this on the other side here again, another hard edge, which we will turn into a soft edge. Nice soft edge. And where we've allowed again, if I leave that sit there for a while, just like we let all of this cheekbone sit over here for a while, we were able to do some seriously glorious blending on that even after several hours. So we have been working on this. We started working on this at 2 in the afternoon. It is now 3.38 in the morning. Uh-huh. I see some more blending that's going to happen right here. Again, I know for you guys, that just looks like a big old hunk of white there. Such is the nature of the wet oils. Now I am going to back out here a bit so I can see a little bit more of it. We're also going to do this because we haven't done this in a while. I don't think we've done this yet. Boom. Turn it black and white. So all of this right here, all of the green and red and yellow and everything, well, it disappears. It's just light and dark. Let's look at her face here. So again, lights and darks. You look at her torso plenty of lights and darks and also take a little note on this right bunch of grays we shall return with our color here and now you see all that separation look at look at this the reds and the blues that goes a bit green all look at this all that comes back with our color so just it's something to ponder something to think about Yep, get steeped, baby. Uh, let's see. Uh, some 3D, but looking at getting some 3D printed minis for some tutorials. Oh, well, thank you very much, Steep T, for the raid. And th again, thanks for a really nice, it was a nice mellow stream. Go follow Steep T. At, well, I mean, everybody, I'm sure everyone already is. But do give him a follow because if you're just looking for something chill <laughs> after a great, <coughs> crazy day of streaming for eight hours. Go relax with go relax with Mr. T. I've just been letting some of my oranges on this side too just kind of sit there same way like I want to do with this. Don't want to mess with that too much. I do, however, need to get some lighter colors on this side. Let's do some of that. Let's get some of this blue on this side of her torso like we did on the other. Let's bring some of this out. Oh, let's see. I'm just trying to get caught up on the chat here. So, uh, I again, I do appreciate the, the subscription there. Hopefully this finds you, or the morning depending on where you it could be more it could actually be nighttime it could be right around supper time if someone is in Australia yeah it could be in the 641 in the evening time frame ish 741 possibly in some parts of the world Oh, missed my disbelief that people wouldn't get gray for mixing purple and green. So, Ven Vendor said it's almost 5 a.m. here. Yeah, it is almost 4 a.m. here. This is where we do the guess the time zone thing. And I can't cheat either because on my phone, as you might notice, there <coughs> there's three time zones there. We, oh, I was right, 6.42 p.m in Melbourne right now. So my my time guessing is uh not too shabby. Yeah, let's get a bit more of the lighter tones out here on the 
extremity there. We also need to get some of our green out there. And you can see that right over there on that part of the shoulder. So, oh, that must be, uh, <clears throat> what is that, Pacific time then an hour, or is that mountain time an hour behind us? Here's some of our green. And it's going to mix in to some of the wonderful darks that we've already got in place over here. We will again, let that mix nicely. It is definitely a different shape than on the other side. So here, let's grab ourselves a blending brush and let's get at this. Oh, thank you very much, Lady B. Uh, the the intention was to do this during well during the day for me tomorrow well today, <laughs> but just for various reasons it was better to start it back up now and it was actually it was nice because it had a some of those colors did have a chance to prove in the proving drawer, and just like Paul Hollywood says they should. Get a touch of our brighter greens over here. Yes, let's do some of that. So they did do a nice, I have to say, they did a nice job of not just simply taking one side and flipping it over onto the other side digitally. I thought maybe that's something that might have done, but definitely not. Right, let's get some of our cerulean blue into that also just to, there we go. Just a hint of it there. We also have some spots and other things down here we're going to want to reflect onto that side. Which means we are going to go into which of our brushes. Let's grab this and we'll get some of our Thalo. Blue touch of our crimson into that as well. So it's kind of a grayed down purple here and that needs to go right over here. As we put this in, and more of the, the color that's already there gets on the brush, these start to get a little bit lighter. They just start to naturally fade a bit more. Look at this, it's already fading. You can see some of that light paint now is mixed into the brush. Now if I go back to the palette and get fresh paint, this won't happen. And sometimes that is what you want. Sometimes, no, what you want actually is this particular effect. And we have done this all across this bust here. I mean, so many different places we have done this where we just kind of let that color, the color that's already there, get into the brush. I'm going to take some of our, get some of our magentas over here. Look over at the chat. Oh, Adrian says, "Stupid by how well the stupefied by how the fake the pearlescent with the purples and the blues. It is, it's trickery. I mean, we are. Well, maybe we're delusionists, but we are illusionists for, for all intents and purposes. We're trying to get people to believe things that ain't really there. Ah." Uh, until oh, waking up, I'm just looking. Oh, well, thank you so much, Drake Conus, for joining me both times. I do appreciate that. There's certainly going to be much more streaming goodness coming your way. And as I said, we will be doing a multi stream with the one, the only Mike Disney. The only place where the White Sox and Tigers can occupy the same field at the same time in a harmony. So we've got that in place. We shall take a blending brush of some type here and we'll go after some of these some of these edges here. Look at that. There we go. Tone some of this down as well. And the more I leave these things alone, just like all of these here, I've left those alone a little bit for a while so they can, those can be manipulated 
without as much oh possibilities of things kind of going south or haywire such things now let's go back to our day low blue here let's really get in some nice strong darks here i'm even going to go stronger with some of that Thalo green mixed into our magenta and poof. Really get some resolution on that. Same thing down here. Again, just like what we did on this side, but now, now on this side. I'm going to get me some more of my Thalo color here. There we have it. Now we're starting to build ourselves. Look at this. Look at that. Take some of that paint away. It's the beauty of the oils. Look at this. Because it also has plenty of the white spirits in there. It's, it's sort of like almost a watercolory type thing. Yes, it's oils. And no, there's no liquid in there. That's just it's oils with a little bit of the white spirits in there. Can do some really nifty thing and just use your finger and actually a lot of this was finger painted yes we did finger painting I kid you not there was I mean what's what's a stream without some finger painting as part of it Let's set you down here so that I can again just taking a paper towel cleaning off the brush such as it is Let's move some of these brushes out of the way bit of maintenance here on these spots. We're going to take away some of the edges on those, make those a bit more of a suggestion of spots rather than a beat you over the head with the spots. That was about, yeah, a little bit more of a fade here too. Why not? What about our spots over here? Yep, bring that up. I'm also about in here. Yeah, I'm gonna now because it's again it's been a while since we put some of these spots here. I wish to take away some of the edges of those. Had I done this a couple hours ago, I just would have remove the paint instead of actually blending the paint so again we're we're moving as opposed to removing all right let's go fade some of our little veiny lines right here oh thank you so much thank you so much mike this is a it's kind of, that dragon's going to seem uh, right tiny compared to this, ain't it? I, I had to change my entire camera setup, by the way. And this is an entirely new, this wet, the, the, my palette's sitting over here. Normally it sits right here. It's over here, it's upside down, and turned on its side. However, it looks normal. I mean, literally it looks like nothing's going on, but uh, this is actually the upper right-hand corner over here. Sounds about, yeah, let's, uh, we put these on. This is one of the first things we did in uh, part two here. Let's do some more of our fading of that. Hey, we got Big Bad B back in the house. How are you doing? How are you doing? We've had we've had some uh, doubles here. I was about a little more fading of that. What do we want to do? Ah, uh, yeah, I want to get. That's our thalo green. Hello, little hobbits. Spark my ganja. As we have, hey, it's Sarah's. Hey, it's Sarah's. Uh, hey, it's Sarah's. Yes, I think I should probably say it that way. As I get me a little bit of a drink here. And out comes what Pelly is to. He gets a drink. Well, if he's getting a drink, I'm getting me a drink too. Let's do that. 
And hey, when you're a Meyer and you're that old, you're always happy if anything sparks your ganja. I mean, he's only been, he's been around a while. He died. I mean, he should get his gun just sparked at least at one once in his life. Maybe not quite by the person or creature he thinks it's going to, but I mean, hey, gonna get me some more of my thalo green into my shadow area under here, so it stays stays dark as a shadow area. Also has a little more interest to it. And now, if I take some of my cerulean blue, we're mixing that with some of our some of our white. I'm gonna just go right over the. Now we have a little more shape here. Shape. Very subtle with this here. Ah, the medical ganja cards. There we go. That's uh yeah legalized medical ganja. That's the that's the good stuff. That's not yeah that's that's the stuff that you get in the Shire. That's not the cheap stuff that you get on the streets of Minas Tirith. The mean streets of Minas Tirith. I actually really don't want to get them off the streets of Osgiliath. <clears throat> Those are definitely the mean streets. Because I'm, I'm noticing here there's actually f like further ridge lines inside the ridge line there. Now what else do we... You know, let's go... Again, we've got all of these rich colors that will need to be transposed onto this side here. Start to do that. So we're going to start out with some of our turquoise here. Let's just get a move on with this so side. Say we all. So say we all. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. We'll we'll bring out Wapelius again for a special occasion, like a sub. He appreciates it. He says thank you very much. Now, of course, on the last stream, he was getting Hello, chased around by a dragon. Spark my ganja. <laughs> Mr. Mola, thank you so much for the follow. That is appreciated. That is definitely appreciated as we are gonna we're gonna spark some green over here in this ganja. Also gonna make sure that we've got a nice light brush. Look at how far back we are from the ferrule. I mean it's not like I don't do this with acrylic paint, but with oils, it's even more essential. If you want that soft brush stroke there. And we're also counting on this doing a little bit of blending with what's already there. You're counting on that. That's why we put that dark color in there first. You can see it's it's blending right into the brush there. Some more green over here. It's that alternating of the green and the orange. Angry Ham asks, how much time have you spent of it on this from being primed? So earlier today, we did about a, uh, let's just call it a seven hour stream. It started at two in the afternoon. And then around 2.15 this morning, I started up again. So we are, I want to say, eight, we're, we're nine, nine hours into this. And this was just primer. And again, there was nothing over here. There was nothing here. None of the little veiny things. None of this stuff was here. None of this was here. That is the power of oils. Because... With the oils, you're saving so many layers of paint that you would normally have to paint in or glaze in or any of those things that you got to do with acrylic paints that with oils, you ain't got to do. And it just saves you so much time. That's why I use them for miniatures. That's why, oh, geez. I've done at least five army painting series now for the Patreon page in oils because... <laughs> And one of them, it went so darn fast, it was only four episodes, actually two of them were only four episodes long. They're normally five. So that's when I knew that I was on to something with the oils. When it's like, wait a minute, I have, I have one less episode to film here of an entire unit painting series? So yeah, <laughs> that 
that was a startling discovery, uh, to say the least. Oh, I'm going to try and get chat up here. Have I slept at all? Uh, I have not slept at all yet, actually. And I did not sleep much, very much last night because I was awakened at a very early hour after going to bed at a very late hour. And I was also awakened at a very early hour that day. So I'm guessing we have, in the last 48 hours, slept six-ish, <laughs> maybe. There, there might be some more sleeping tomorrow, I think. Actually, what I might do is, even though I'm almost done filming an army painting series, speaking of army painting series, I might actually film a terrain video while this is set up like this, just to, uh, just to see how this works for terrain. Because, hey, love me terrain. I don't know if you guys have seen the fountain video. Oh, let me see. Angriham oils are a different skill set. I'm just looking to see what Angriham might have asked. Oops, wait, let me scroll up here, because Angriham might have asked an important question here. Oh, I got a whiff of it just before I went to bed, and then even more details when I woke up. I think it was um, four, I want to say almost four years ago, when I was just, happened to look at I think it was a Facebook Live. This is when Facebook Live was really a popular thing. And one of my Facebook friends is a Korean painter, and he was using Windsor Newton oils, not you know, AK Interact, not, not MIG ammo. He was just using Windsor Newton oil paints to paint a... It was a T-35, which still stunned me, the fact that it was just regular oil paints. And I said, I, too, have oils. I too wish to paint miniatures with oils. And I just got myself yield starter set here. Oh my gosh, darn near four years ago. Look at how much of that's left. Like I said, I barely, <laughs> barely touched that starter set. And it's been around for four years. We got a genuine vision in the house. Uh, well, I think everybody in the universe already follows genuine vision. But if you're not... Here's a reminder, follow Genuine Visions. Help him in the push to partner. Which, unless, did that already happen, actually? I, I just wasn't sure if maybe that happened, and I somehow didn't see that. Uh, I've been up since by prepping and setting stuff up. Yes, that is, uh, that is something that I've had to inform people of, that you know these streams right here, it takes me a good, sometimes as much as an hour and a half, just to, for one stream, get the graphics ready for it. Now, there may come a point, oh, a while from now, where I have more of the graphics built in. But every time I do a different company, like, well, Blackheart models, I hadn't done any Blackheart models Twitch streams. So that meant I had to go in and do a whole new set of graphics. Uh, I still will be, I'll be perpetually making graphics for the Song of Ice and Fire stuff, unfortunately. So that's pretty much never going to end. There's going to be more graphics for 40... Oh, good grief. I'm going to have to make graphics for 40k on here. Oh, let me see. I'm just looking to see. Uh, still pushing. Uh, still pushing for the partner. Yeah, I know. Earlier, early, well, <laughs> I sabotaged myself earlier today by accidentally leaving this stupid stream on uh, for like a half an hour. So yeah, the let's just say the average viewers took a wee bit of a dive with that. <laughs> so <laughs> note to self: double check that. Anytime I'm going to leave here, I must double check that. Because, man, that cheesed me off. I mean, I really, not that partner's going to make all that much difference, because once I found out that your VOD still go away after 60 days, I said, the heck with it. I'm just going to stick with my previous program. I've taken the raw video, remastering it, and throwing it on YouTube. Let's lift this. Again, 
I think we're officially past a thousand pounds. I mean, we've been at, stuck at 970 pounds on this thing for a while. I'm going, I'm going four figures. I'm adding an extra zero onto this. And I'm also going to add an extra 15 yards to my longbow. So we are now healthily past 1,000 yards also on our longbow. No wimpy compound bows for this guy. I don't want to see any pulleys on my bow. But I do want to see some fluorescent orange on my pallet. That's going to go over here. It's going to live right there. This thing is, oof, it's a solid chunk of resin. I almost broke my toe on it yesterday because I was going to take pictures of it. And I forgot it was sitting on the floor. My foot discovered it. Fortunately, it was not a direct hit. It was a glancing blow. It was it was a tap on the foot, so to speak. Could have been a whole lot worse. Oh, thank you so much, Lady B. It is appreciated. I just uh, I saw so many different versions of this and. There was stuff that I really thought would be neat to do on it. And then I thought, no, I don't want to just be copying what everybody else is doing. And that is when I saw those iridescent shells there. I said, you know what, let's see if we can't do that. Hello, little hobbit. Spark my ganja. Who does Gandalf? He greets in laser tag. Thank you so much for the follow. Thank you so much for that. Gandalf appreciates it for sure. We're doing some more of our nifty little wet blending here like you do. You know what? I'm just going to pop a little bit of this right there on the, the horns that are here. Sorry, that uh, piece of tape got caught on my so microphone. Uh-huh. So uh -huh. Mike Disney being a little sneaky, sneaky and cheeky, he brings out a Pelia spell brush who... He drinks from the glass of goodness. Oh yeah, there's a whole brain thing back here, like exposed brain stuff going on back there. That's why we've got the paper towel back here. And you can see these little indentations in my hand. Those are spikes on the back of her head that have been sticking into my hand. So yeah, we've got this. So uh, We're going to be a painter that now has an insanely developed... Uh, like left quad and forearm here. So we're just going to throw this out like you do. Oh, let's take another little blending brush and we'll just go after this. Feather that ever so gently. It's no fuss, no muss. That's for sure. Oh, let's see. <laughs> Drax just learned to paint with the left hand and swap hands. Uh, that actually, I have painted with my left hand. It was, well, tch. let's just say if you ever hear something about a drunken speed painting contest, run the other way, because those never end well. But for myself and uh, another person, we did not participate in the con consuming of the alcohol, thank goodness, because everybody else got sick who did. But our penalty was... I had to paint with my left hand using my hair. So yes, I took my ponytail. That's how we that's how the finest of the Wapple sable was created. The finest of all sables across the world. And I painted with my left hand while someone else was holding the figure while walking around a table. That was uh yeah, I've painted in some adverse circumstances. I think that qualifies. Oh, look at this. So where we did some of those glazes earlier, I don't want to say they're dry as in like dry, but they have settled in place enough that I can go right over the top and they are totally unaffected. However, they still yield their nice dark shady goodness underneath. There you go. Spin her around that way. 
it, it's the hair of the wapo that bit ya. How's that? So yeah, I, I am seeing the fluorescent orange in here. You know, the the fluorescent green. I I guess I was a bit harsh on the fluorescent paints. Uh, they they do have their potential. They just they need an assist, and we're gonna try and give them their assist right over here. Let me find myself a here we go. Let's get some of our paint out of this. I'm gonna need some more of my cadmium yellow here, and that's gonna be the cadmium yellow light because we've got an awful lot of green in our cadmium yellow, and that's not what we need for making our fluorescent orange lighter. So there we go. Cadmium yellow light into our fluorescent orange. It's also thinner. Mm, a little more thinner. Let's get her in the right spot here. Hello, little hobbit. Spark my ganja. <laughs> How oh, is Miss Miss Ather Rocker Miss Ather Rockstar? Boy, hearing uh, the Gandalf's voice, all I could think of was Mithrandia, which that was the uh, pejorative name, right, that they gave to Gandalf there. Well, at least uh, everyone's favorite Easterlings, I do believe. Maybe Harad gave him that name. Now, I, I know that, uh, well, in the movies, I do believe they had either Theoden or Grima call him that. Actually, didn't uh, didn't Denethor whack him with the uh, Mithrandia label there, too? So we're just going to position this like you do. Further out here, yeah. Where's my cadmium red? Let's not forget that. This is another thing that will help out our fluorescent orange. Yes, indeed. Let's get some more of that O into here too, because I'm trying to see maybe what we've got on this side over here. Ah. Well, thank you again, Miss Ether Rockstar. I do appreciate all the follows. It is definitely appreciated here. Now let's get some of our get some of the red. Look at that! It's that whole idea of the red and orange juxtaposed against that green. That seems to be the the thing that really generates that iridescent look so it's really important to get these right next to each other of course red and green right next to each other can uh, raise some interesting issues I was about a little bit thinner in that red so this part is starting to get brightly colored in a hurry and I'll just keep flipping it over sir, so you can see what we are trying to match. We're trying to match this side over here onto the other side. All right, how's about some of that down in here too? Yeah, get a little bit of the red there. I'm going to spin this around some more. Pick up against some more of our red. I'm going to use a little bit of my. That's a touch of the cadmium yellow deep there with the cadmium yellow red. So not going to be as maybe as intensive an orange as what the fluorescent would yield. But it is going to be opaque. Sometimes opacity has as much to do with brightness as anything else. The brighter colors, the more intense they are, they actually tend to be the more translucent colors. Stuff like your cadmiums, well, those are obviously going to be more opaque, so in some ways you can get a little more juice out of those 
just by virtue of their opacity and how they cover things. Which is why it can be really handy to mix those into those other colors that you want to be so bright, like your fluorescents and phthalo greens and phthalo blues. That's why you know, something like a cerulean blue and phthalo green work really well together. It's why a cerulean blue and a ultramarine violet go well together, because the violet's going to be translucent. However, that cerulean blue, nice and opaque. Nice and opaque. <clears throat> Move this over here where I can get to these guys. Even even here with the oils, even on a gigantic bust like this, I do not stay locked in one area for long. I move around. Remember with the oils, you you dwell in one area too long, it's not going to it's not gonna work out well. Because you will overwork an area and it's gonna happen fast. Way faster than you think. By faster than you think, I mean in a matter of seconds. You can go from hey to oh Sometimes not even that fast. Or that slow. I think I want some green under there. I want some of my orange in here. This is where I just start to position colors. Nothing final whatsoever. However, it's best to just start thinking about that area. Just like we did on the other side. So if we want our green, let's go in here. We've got our, again, that's the cadmium green light. What's some of our fluorescent green? We've got a nice big old wide filbert brush that we just created out of a standard bristle brush. Well, there's, there's a little bit of that thalo left let's bring this all the way down to here now and as some of that original darker color that brown matter gets in the brush we have to in effect clean the brush by adding more of our color back to it let's bring in some let's bring in the greens it looks bright it's not it's just because what's underneath it is so dark because that right there, that's nowhere near white at all. That's why we're trying to establish those darks. If you want to have light, you got to have dark. It's just one of them truisms of the universe. Now, let's see. Or to make the where you get your white spirits. Well, it seems to go by a whole bunch of names, just like Gandalf. But it just it's odorless paint thinner. It's the Speedball brand, Mona Lisa. I just get it on Amazon. I can send you a link tomorrow. And I got I got some more on the way. I just again I I first got it at Michael's. That was the first time I saw it. I got it. I liked it. I saw I could get it on Amazon and well, ever since I've been getting it on Amazon. But it can be attained from Michael's too. That's uh, what was his actually he did uh I just heard his Elven name. There's a, there's a couple of what are they the like YouTube channels that kind of do the lore of Middle Earth because I've never actually read the Lord of the Rings. I will never have time to read the Lord of the Rings. I will certainly never have time to read the Cell of Silmarillion or Book of Lost Tales or Letters or any of those type of things. However, there are some YouTube channels that collate that information into sort of mini documentaries. Look at that. Orange over here, green over there. Oh, we've got Deck Knight. How are you doing? We are enjoying our oil experience here oil extravaganza this is uh we're in hour nine you're in hour nine of oil extravaganza just like we did on this side over here which we painted in the first seven hours 
along with her face as we turn this monstrosity over. Yeah, I'm going to get me some of my cadmium green. A little bit of that yellow in there, too. Let's really brighten this up, shall we say. going to brace my wrist against the shoulder over here. Gonna throw in some of my lighter greens here too. Because we, we introduced some of the some of that phthalo, some of the bluish green. Now we've got to not whack the camera. Oh thank you very much, Deck Knight. I appreciate that. This is this has been quite the challenge, especially since, well, <laughs> we've painted the whole darn thing in essentially a third of a day. broken up briefly by an exercise session and a shower and then back to it so we yeah well this is now 10 hours streaming in about a 18 hour period maybe eh, less than that probably 10 hours of streaming in a 14 hour period I'm gonna continue oh yeah let, let's get some of our bright green over here too I know some of this is going to wander into territory. It's a little tough to see, but uh, <laughs> this is a this is a challenging piece to uh, get on screen, to say the least. To say the very least. Again, some more of our some more of our blending here. As long as we've got colors in place, can't really blend colors that ain't there. Now that that's uh maybe not a merch worthy phrase, but it's a it's a book of wapo worthy phrase. You can't blend color that's not there. I gotta remember that somehow. Unfortunately can't write it down. But we've had uh, we have had some very helpful listeners just put in the chat or send me a a whisper with said quote in it. Again, working in. Now it's starting to get a little bit thinner on this because remember, thick paint sticks over thin, and vice versa. And this is where we're getting into the thinner paint here. I've got to keep my hands on this, though. She almost kind of uh, slipped out of the grasp right there. We don't want that to happen. But yeah, this wasn't really sculpted on the other side, so like I said, we're we're seeing two very different sides of the same coin here. Now this will have some more blue with it. How angry him ask with oil paints do you have to protect the finish? I really well, there's a whole bunch of oil painted figures that I have never done anything to after they were done. But just like oh here, let me grab Mr. Troll. Typically, what I will do, this is another thing. I was actually painted on a live stream as well. He was done in oils. Once it's all dry, I will take something like, well, this right here. It's the one product that we use from Army Painter that has paint involved. Army Painter Anti-Shine. Brush it on and done. Any kind of shining this that you get goes away. And because you are brushing that on in the controlled climate of your indoor house, well, unless you don't have an indoor house, you don't have to worry about that nasty stuff that happens with those sprays. that We haven't used a spray varnish of any kind in years. We have replaced it with that because it is 100% reliable. It's the exact same stuff I would use on my acrylics. That that is the other thing I try to, well, whenever I'm working with oils, it becomes the myth busting time, and one of the myths that I like to bust with oils is that you got to do all these different things. You got to gloss coat them and this and that and the other. And I just my I watch this and I say why, what was the purpose behind this? Maybe because somebody a whole long time ago did something like that. Maybe because the materials 
at that time made you have to do that sort of thing? And then I try to say, well, you know, I'm I'm doing that very, you know, I'm painting that very same thing here. I don't seem to need all of those crazy gloss varnishes and everything else. But army painter anti shine. That that is the miracle substance. Well, I mean, put it this way: every freaking other satin or matte varnish. I can look. I can go matte varnish. Starts out looking like freaking Elmer's glue. And that is, that's supposed to make you feel <laughs> assured somehow that this Elmer's glue is going to mysteriously not only dry flat, but dry clear. Army Painter Anti Shine starts out clear. Because, you know, what better way to end clear than to start clear instead of the Elmer's glue? Ah, with oils, I've been mostly watching Bob Ross. Well, there was there was lots of happy accidents here, especially when it comes to things like the fluorescence here. Because I was able to learn some interesting key things about these. So on, on the one side, I just, I was not super thrilled with how they worked out. On this side, they worked out vastly better so much better on this side than on the other side. Now they they look the same. It's the it's the ease of application and use. That's that's a that's the different ball game. Uh, there are no mistakes, only happy accident. Uh, that is what he used to say. And he also used to talk about the the happy little brain sack and he lives over here. Sometimes he talks to the other brain sacks. Sometimes the other brain sack, they don't like him. And they tell him to do stuff. And then the brain sack gets a happy little chainsaw and he cuts out all the other happy little brain sacks. See, that's the kind of storytelling you're going to get when I stream for 10 freaking hours in a 16 hour period. That right there is. Bob Ross After Dark. Which, now that... <laughs> well, that can't be merch, but it can be part of the... Uh, can be part of the myth and the legend here of Wampleville. Bob Ross After Dark. This is the other thing, too. Taking that fluorescent orange, mixing it with some of my magenta, that was very fun. Yeah, we get ourselves some of that nice red. Again, you check out those references on either side. There's as much red in this as there is orange as far as that iridescent glow. Uh, let's see, you better have the perm for going after dark. Well, I mean, there's a perm somewhere. Now, there's a reason why we've got a Wapelia spell brush here, so... That that is the ultimate hairstyle right there. That is uh, that is moi. That's why he jumps out when there's something to celebrate, like cheers and bits and all those goodly things that need celebrating. That's why he comes out and he does his nifty dance. Just gonna move this over here so I can get at some of my darks in here with my magenta mixed with the fluorescent it looks light it's not it's maybe like a value six however because of having all of those nice little darks in place it makes this seem that much lighter again red against the green red against the green normally again together they just make a dingy brown but when they get next to each other they do some nifty complimenting. However, we still can do a bit of... I know, sneak my brush in here. Right in there. You know what? I might just take a touch more of my... 
white spirits and thin that down and we're just gonna look at we're holding the brush two fingers gonna get me some of my red down in there gonna get some more of that over here let that blend into my oranges as you do let that blend in with some again the greens and the oranges side by side doing all kinds of contrasty stuff that's a technical term you can use that's that's free right there that is free technical knowledge all about the color contrast and I, I think it uh, wasn't all that long ago that we did our little black and white trick on the screen so I think we'll let's get some of this red down under yeah right here got plenty of the green in place this is again the magenta mixed with that fluorescent boom decision rather than precision just decide <laughs> there's also the the pooper get off the pot type of mentality as well let me get something to drink here real quick because the voice only has so many minutes in it so many words in it we shall do a bit of blending over here too like that there we go And it does have a. See, I'm going to try and get some more of my phthalo in here too, like we've got on the other side. Urgh. That's what we're. That's what we need in here. Aha. Uh -huh. This will work. Cerulean blue in combination with some of our green and white. Gonna really tip this guy, this lady over here. Aha. There we go. It's almost a, on a bit of a dividing line between all of the reds and greens. We have to have something. It can't just be the, the orange, reds, and greens. We have to bring some of this back here, just like we've been trying to bring some of this out here. Now, let's get that down here. Let's get a little more of that cerulean blue. It's getting to be, it's still looking a bit on the greener side. We want some more of this turquoise in there. Yeah. I'm even going to get some of my phthalo blue into that. I had to be careful just how much I rotate this thing. Ooh, that is precarious. Oh my goodness. I don't even want to tell you just exactly how precarious this thing is right now. One false move in about ooh, four hours of face painting takes a face plant into a chamois sponge. No pressure whatsoever. None at all. That certainly needs a little differential over here from all of our brain sack colors. That's a bit more of the lighter turquoise in here as well. That's going to give us a bit of contrast there now. And let's safely rotate this back around. Thank you. Now, how's about some of our cadmium yellow light? That's mixed with our green. Where's the... Wow, I'm going to have to throw out some more of my titanium white here. But remember, thinner paint sticks to thin. This is where we've got to really start going thin if we want this stuff to stick. 
Now we can just sort of rest my elbow. And, hey, we got an Orchrist Gaming in here. How are you doing? Also, yet another person to follow. Who'd have thought all of these wonderful Twitch streamers would one by one make their appearance here in Wampleville? And you need to follow all of them. And, of course, Orchrist Gaming is among those. If you're not already doing it, do that now. We're just continuing on with the rest of this, uh, this, this, uh, I want to say it, I'm going to still count it as my, it's my longest day of streaming, because there was an interlude, but we are now, oh geez, we're closer to 11 hours in on this now, because we, we started with 8, we've almost tacked on another 3, so yes indeed. All right, even more. You know, look at this. I mean, that is, you would almost think it's something like a glaze that I'm throwing on there, and yet, look at how it actually covers. Look at that. Thinner paint will stick over thick paint, and vice versa. And I'm going to say that a bazillion times, <laughs> and I'll, I'll just continue to say it, because it seems to be very important, because people forget all the time. Also, do not be hasty. If you are hasty and you get a little too excited and you blend, 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 oh, you're going to end up with some mud. And you won't be happy about that. So if you wish to avoid the mud and the sad, I do suggest working on large things like this which take you away from focusing on just one tiny part uh, just by this, their sheer giganticness. That right there is a free tip that you can use. That's about a bit more here of our... Look at just a little bit of a highlight there because we're getting so much into the that's so thin it's going to stick now we're going to grab some more of my well, my titanium white it's going to get out here still can't believe i already had to mix a whole nother bottle of this stuff yes it is that heavy a little bit of our white we get that and look at that that already it's still not even a maybe it's a value two tops but let's really get into here just like what we've we see there in the reference pictures a couple of very bright greens that I think could also use a touch of the cadmium yellow light we'll do that just throw that right over here its own little spot there. Practically going to become like a lemon yellow. That almost uh, flipped over on me right there. That would have been fun. Again, thin it down. Hopefully you can see the brush still. And I'm going to use my arm here to keep this from completely rotating and flipping over. But i got to remember, there's only so many of these brush strokes that I can do with this <clears throat> before I have to go back and get myself some fresh paint. Got to go back and get fresh paint. And because it's you got the wet paint underneath there, that wet paint's going to get onto your brush. All right, so we've been doing that with our green. Let's not forget our oranges here. Yeah, that's how... That's how heavy that sucker is. You heard that sound. <laughs> Just kind of slamming down onto the table. Yeah, let's a uh, touch of our white here. Now we got some bright in that orange, and we're going to do our little thing here by thinning that down. 
I'll lift this back up again. Oh, we got a snow yak in the house. Yeah, that's uh well this side here we hadn't <clears throat> we didn't touch this thing at all yesterday. Didn't touch it at all and we've been doing the the face and this uh, everything on the other side here to try and have two sides of the same coin. Oh, how's about giving that a little more of a rotation here and let us get right along that edge. But see, I just had basically one little brush stroke out of that. Then I had to go get, <clears throat> I'm sorry. And the voice is definitely starting to fail here. Definitely starting to say, hey, what the heck are you doing to me? This ain't how this is supposed to work. Yeah, these, uh, this whole kind of carapace down here is just, well, that and then you got the crazy external brain things. And I'm still trying to figure out exactly what's going on with those. Like I said, I, George has been a wee bit busy. So hopefully at some point I can just ask George and say, George, what's the deal with this and, uh, with this and with this? Now we're starting to get the same bright yellows like we have on this side over here. Let's spin this back around again. Ah, I can I can at least use this one horn here. Kind of hook my thumb on that to keep it from essentially flipping over, because uh, that would be not good. All right, so back to the being direct, right? That's direct. You do one brush stroke, you leave it. You do another brush stroke and you leave it. No pitter patter. We're not we're not sending Morse code here. We're not typing on a keyboard. We're painting a bust. No Morse code. Bam. One stroke. Then we can go back in here and then we can manipulate those as need be. So just be direct, be decisive. You'll be glad <coughs> you'll be glad if you are. Here's some more of our you know, <coughs> once again I can only do a few brush strokes of that. Or I've got to get some more new paint. Uh, one more question about oils. Is it just a, it is, I would say it's more sturdy than acrylics because, well, uh, how many oil, <coughs> how many oil paints have lasted for five, six hundred years, a thousand, <coughs> thousand years? Sorry, my voice is definitely fading fast here. As I hit the camera there. Acrylics, they're just they're just plastic toys by comparison. And I've got oil painted figures again from years ago. We're talking gaming figures. We're not talking about stuff that just sits on a shelf somewhere. We're talking about bolt action figures painted in oils. Again, being <coughs> being very direct with that. I'm gonna get me. Let's see if I've got. One second here. And give me something to drink. And hopefully that helps. <clears throat> That's another one of the myths about oils. That they will actually, well, the water is not actually helping whatsoever. What I actually need to do is grab a cough drop. And sadly, those are in an entirely different part of the room. And they're just basically kind of out of reach at this point, especially since I've got oil paint all over my hands. And my voice is different. I have, let's say, between filming tutorials and doing 
these two streams have basically effectively been filming for oh probably about 20 hours out of the last 32 <laughs> Uh, there was actually no airbrush on here. I, I put the primer on there, but all of this is with the oils. All of this was brushed on and blended with the oils. Zero airbrush uh, aside from just priming it. That is the only thing we did with the airbrush. Just primed it. Now I'm looking here to... I'm just going to try and get myself another blending brush here. Give me a second to do that. Got to get all of the liquid out of that. Make it as dry as possible. And then let's get into some blending here. Now at some point I will try and take the raw footage of that, well of this, and turn it into a YouTube video. However, being 11 hours long, it's going to have to be a few parts. Needless to say like my Song of Palooza broadcast that I did. That's being broken into three parts. And all of this, again, everything here was all just blended. There is no airbrush to this. It's all hairy sticks. Good old-fashioned hairy stick. Uh, I do not do speed rampings, unfortunately. I don't do speed rampings or voiceovers because I just detest those. And they, it would take a long process and make it that much longer. Especially since you need to be able to see a lot of what I'm doing. Because I've seen that pe people have watched the speed ramped ones and then they realize... Yeah, I really wish I knew what the heck they were actually doing there. Because all I saw was a brush. I just, there was another person. I. It was an oil tutorial that they did. Yes, they were narrating over it. Unfortunately, the brush was flying around so fast, I couldn't really tell what they were doing. So, yeah, I just, I... Seven years ago, when I first started filming tutorials... There were two things that I swore I would not do. One was voiceover and two was speed ramping. Now it's a little bit different, say, with uh, with Lockie and his terrain tutorials because, well, um, you can get a good sense of it. But here, I could only imagine it would just generate more questions as people say, wait, well, what the heck happened there? What were you doing there? And I, I do realize that that means that makes for some long videos to watch, but you don't necessarily have to watch them all at once. I, I know I joke all the time that it can take me sometimes a few days to watch an 18 to 20 minute tutorial. I'll watch what I can. Sometimes I'll even fall asleep. Actually, more than once, I'll fall asleep during it. And I will watch it two, three more times to be able to get the whole thing. Sometimes actually it does keep the information in my head a little bit better. Uh, let's see, all the Wapple style. Lots of contrasting everywhere. Yes, sirree. Let's see, now the uh, first video that I filmed was back in 2013. So it was, yeah, it was around about seven, a little over seven years ago when I filmed my very first tutorial. Good grief, that was painting, I was painting those old, those Rivet Wars figures. Those were crazy. You think this thing's unusual? Those Rivet Wars guys, they were basically, they looked like Lego people. There we go. So I already have, oh my goodness, at least six or seven episodes, uh, Twitch broadcast on the YouTube channel. And that's just James Wapple on YouTube. 
the troll painted in oils is on there. I think one of the doll Amroth is on there. A whole bunch of the Song of Ice and Fire tutorials on there. Heck, even the that part of the tutorial where I took weathering powders and painted a base with weathering powders that is also now on the YouTube on the YouTube channel. There, a little bit more there. Ah. So I, uh, let's see. Uh, oh, thanks, uh, or Chris. Let's see. I didn't start painting miniatures till late 2015. I picked up a brush before that. Now, of course, I did 2D art for a good 20 plus years before I started painting the miniatures. And we're going to well. Next year, we'll be celebrating our 20th year of painting miniatures. And I'll have to do some... Well, actually, I already did do a... There's actually a video on my YouTube channel. Hey, Oliver Ghost is back. This this thing is friggin' huge. It's massive. There's me holding it with two hands. And there's, again, our one side over there. And over here. I am going to, let me see here, and I promise this time I'm going to remember to actually turn off my stream. Let's see if anybody else is actually doing some stuff here. So we got Zambies is back again and Gamer Dad. Wow, we still got a whole bunch of people. So I just want to look and see who is, who's out there doing stuff. Because again, as the, as the voice starts to say, hey, hey, what are you doing to me? That's when we say, okay, let's look for, let's start looking for potential raids. Yeah, this, well, it's it started out with a more reasonable weight of about 25 to 30 pounds. And it has since been declared to weigh somewhere in the neighborhood of almost 1,000 pounds. At least I feel like I've listed 1,000 pounds in the last, oh, 16 hours or so. Here, this is a little finger painting. We actually did finger painting over here. We did painting with the sponges. No joke. We did use these to paint with. Here, let's hold her. I hope you can see some of the, the veiny things and some of the spots there. We've started to work some of the veiny things there, like what's on the other side here. Yes, indeed. 